No, I'm talking about Nick. Oh, Nick, 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 Nick. No, he can't have a great party show. today. So we're going to start here by talking about this work, um, which we felt like we couldn't really not talk about because it's sort of the elephant in the room if you don't start with this one, because it's the thing that you first see um, when you come in. And this particular one, uh, it deals with the myth of Sisyphus. So of course, Sisyphus, the trickster, um, who cheated death twice and was punished for his temerity uh, by Zeus um, by getting you know, what was considered a pretty bad punishment, um, pushing a boulder up a hill in Hades for all eternity. So pushing it all the way up, rolls back down, start all over again. And I don't know about you, that feels quite relevant um, to kind of <laughs> being around sort of at this particular time um, and maybe in this particular place. But I thought, Francis, maybe if we could just start with what does that myth kind of mean to you and what were you thinking about in terms of bringing it into the show? Firstly, do you think we should take these off? Because I think it's... Oh, yeah. Are people comfortable with it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, well, exactly. It's a hard task, and I think that's the task of life, isn't it? That we, it's hard, but we just keep on going. So when I was asked to do a show that was specific to this, uh, to Christchurch, I was thinking, well, what's not, you know, thinking about the earthquake, about the massacre, and, and life in general, and I was thinking, but I didn't want to be literal. And I thought that this idea of pushing a stone up a hill that we all just have to keep on trying, keep on trying, was a, a nice way to think about it. Because actually, even though it's specific here, it's also universal. Also, I quite like the idea that maybe it's a choice. I mean, he was told he has to do it. But I think probably actually himself would have not done it sometimes. <laughs> have we got mics? Amazing, fantastic. <laughs> thank you, Thanks for seeing those. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. making some sticky insects and that one just sort of arrived one day. It was going to be around the backside because I wanted this, I guess this is probably a mountain, this thing. I wanted it to feel very solid. The idea is that it probably wouldn't work today, but if you came into a, a, a space and it was empty, maybe that all you see is this and it looks like you've got a very, um, a very minimal show with just one piece and I wanted this stuff on the left to reveal itself. And I wanted the behind the rock to be somehow intriguing. And the sticking stick was originally there, but suddenly it popped up the top. <laughs> you're, in the, oh, you're in the back of trouble, that sticking sticks. You're all around the space and it's like kind of stupid. Yeah. 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 quite a few other little bits of moss. Basically, it's this kind of brown, or a similar brown, that's made of balata, which is a wild rubber from Brazil. Um, do I go through the whole thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, it's a long story. So um, I first discovered balata when I was in Brazil. Um, I was about 18 years ago in a residency, and I went to a craft fair and saw a man called Dalindo and he was making very beautiful objects of about this size to this size. Chris Paul was amazing, and um, I make little... So, I work between two things all the time. I, I make the small sculptures, and I think about the exhibition design as a whole. So, it's all of this sort of edging and um, cuts of steel and things like that that I wanted, and he was yeah, amazing at translating that into exactly what I need. Also, um, some of the show was conceived when I was even though I made all the work here, I was working on the show, developing the show when I was in London, in my studio there. So I made a 1 to 20 model of the space, and then made these little cardboard things which I could float around. Originally, these were in the next room. It was quite a different show. Yes, to, um, so I came, was it early last year, I think? Or was it uh, the year before? The year before. The year before, I came. I came to New Zealand to start working on the show, and I went to visit New Plymouth, where I was born, and went to visit my lovely friend, Nick Brandon, Nicholas Brandon, who's known as his potter, and he, he had stopped potting quite a long time ago, and maybe 10, 15 years ago, we'd say Ian, <laughs> I um, visited him when I had a show in New Plymouth at the Gulf Brewster, and I asked him to um, throw me a shake, because he's such a master potter. And I knew that even after not potting for a long time, he'd be able to do it. He reached under a rotten bit of the floorboards in the house, pulled out some fresh clay, wedged it, and immediately threw me you know, a, a big piece like this after not potting for quite a long time. And I'm so excited, but he got the bug again. So he started potting again, and this last trip, and he's been potting yeah, daily for the last 15 years again or so. And then, but he's, he sort of questions why make them, uh, why burn trees, and he, he's an environmentalist too, and um, I know why. <laughs> and so um, he, he, I came along, he said, I've made all these pots for you, like, are you ready to decorate them? I was like, didn't expect that, but yes, I really am. So um, 
Early last year, yeah. Yeah, I, I went and spent a weekend and just rashed them and you'll see in the next room there's lots of these little drawing books, um, you only see the pages that are open, but in there are lots and lots of me working out the shapes. So, it, well, he, so he's made the pots, these are his shapes, the shapes that he knows that I like, and then I, I draw on the, yeah, I, I draw the shape and I try and work out what, what works in the pot. And um, Ian and Jackie, his neighbours, said that yesterday he did another firing, so I've got the whole lot of this fired new works to start on next year. So I need another show. <laughs> so the images that you've got in here, um, obviously we can see Sisyphus, um, but there are also, there's also another figure that you were interested in. Yeah, there's Atlas, because I always completed Atlas and Sisyphus, and um, they're kind of doing a similar thing visually, because Atlas is holding the universe, and um, Sisyphus has got this big ball too. So, and they both kind of macho guys too, so I like this idea of these macho men. And also, I usually do these figures as a bearded man, because that's Nick Brandon, because Brandon has a big long woolly beard. My husband has a long woolly beard. Laurie Steer, who is helping me, has a long woolly beard. And Janine, you need to work on yours. <laughs> <laughs> so vulnerability and, and kind of awkwardness. Um, so they've, they've got, they're all kind of elbows and knees and some of them look like they're having a midlife crisis. And um, so I feel like there's quite a lot that, you know, you can, you can kind of draw on in that um, little bit of a psychological test for you as you, as you pick the pot that represents you. Mm -hmm.